the right a and with the right artist is really important. Mm-hmm. Like, I've, I I I didn't manage Tip in the beginning, but as an A and R person, I knew what was going on in the label. I knew what was going on with other records. I, I had a lot of information. Yeah. So I can see where you are and where you where we could possibly get better, right? Like, or how we can fit you, like where you fit in the rest of the shit you have no idea about. Yep. And I actually see you for real. So I know what, when I'm watching people around you, I notice when they light up, I know when they they get back down. Yeah. So I'm just trying to push more of that. The thing that I see people light up for, let's see that. Crazy baby, what up? 288, let's go. Hey. You must think I'm stupid, like I'm thirsty, like, like I, I ain't, ain't ate. ate. I just got a crap with two G's, bitch, ain't no mistake. I just got a Yo, man, <laughs> that's hard. Man, that's just some stuff that's I be hard, riding to. yo, that's hard, yo. Come on, you bring him yo, in? Yo, hey, one time my boy Prezzy, baby. Yo, you. welcome to Mind Over Music. I'm your boy Dallas Austin. My homeboy DJ Castro over right here. Castro, he ain't even on the ones and twos. He's on the ones. Castro walks around with the phone. He ain't even got to have the DJ set up no more. He got the phone. He always gonna bring some heat from the streets. Who was that? That's my boy Prezzy Baby, man. Buggy B's on the beat. Yeah. I mean, you know, like one time for Buggy 3MG. That's like A&R. This is yeah. a whole A&R episode right here. Like, so, so oh, yeah, you yeah, keep yeah. your ears to the streets. You always bring mm-hmm. something new. What do you look for when you when you bring, like when you riding around, you, you don't even like bring it in. You just ride around bumping it on your phone. Like Castro will walk around. <laughs> that is true. If he got something new and hot that he found, he don't even come to me like, yo, D, check this out. He'd be like, he just walk around the house or walk around the studio or walk around like that. And if they ask you about it, then you know it's something because I love to listen to new music. And honestly, man, like you got to be a fan of music as a DJ because, you know, we listen to thousands of songs and, you know, you're a DJ as well. I don't know yeah. if a lot of people know that, but yeah, this man's sure. a crazy DJ. Yeah, we got to get it in. But from an A&R perspective, I feel like, you know, the first five seconds, there's a first five second theory, right, in the game where you listen to the first three to five seconds of a song and you kind of like. You know if it's going to be hot or not. Right. Yeah. So I kind of go with that. If the beat dope, if the first couple of bars, even if it's the beat, that's the thing that catches The thing about first. DJing. And I love DJing myself, obviously, but okay. the thing about it is it gives you a, a different read on the music uh, that you're playing. It gives you a different read on the crowd, depending on what time, type of music you're playing, but it's direct energy. You know what I'm saying? Direct correlation, exactly. And it correlates back to A&R in a way because you want to know what everybody's listening to. And I think, honestly, you're right because this is like when you DJ and let's say you're warming a set up. Let's say I'm opening up a set. Let's say we're on a tour, right? And I got like the first set for the first artist for the first song, the first person performing. I want to make sure it's not about the artist song that's performing. It's about a song that everybody's going to connect to. So so yeah. you want to get them. So let's say this, right? You're mm-hmm. a DJ that's opening up for, let, let's say he's doing Roscoe Dash for a while. Yeah, you know, one time for my boy Sco, man. Shout what out Roscoe, Roscoe, man. What up, Sco? If you're doing that to get the crowd hyped up before the act comes out, mm-hmm. what do you do? You play records that... And you know what? It's, it's a lot of ways you can do that. I like to play... Because you got to get them in the vibe first before they yeah. come out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. I mean, I feel like at the end of the day, I want to play something that resonates with them. So it's basically based off the demographic. And it's you can get it... Reading the crowd. Reading the crowd, but also... So that's a DJ note right there. Yeah. If you don't know to read the crowd... The demographic that's when, of what it is, yeah. Because I feel like this. The DJ, you're playing records for everybody else, even though you're playing for yourself. In a way, you're, yeah. You're still playing... You know, if your crowd is like this... And you don't care about that. <laughs> then you, probably, you probably want to read the crowd uh, so you can get them jumping. You, know you got to play music that people are familiar with. And that's the most important because a lot of people think, oh, I got this new song, right? It's the newest thing out. But if nobody has heard it or has a grown legs or even if they don't know it and they might fuck with it, they still want to get acclimated in some type of way. And it's a lot of DJs, you know, we got DJs that have done it for years. We got new DJs coming in. So I think DJing is a form of a and r because as a DJ, you are the gateway, if you will, to what people are hearing, whoever those people may be in that particular event or setting that you're in. So it's like if I have an opportunity to play me and you never know who's in the crowd, too, because yeah, sure. I've been I've played a lot of parties where I'm just going crazy and it might not seem like a lot of people's there, but the right people are there. That's so true. they'll come back and be like, nah, you know, I want you to do this party for me, that. And, like, I was just listening. And I've got booked a lot of ways when I thought nobody was there. 
just by doing the same consistency that I would do if it was a packed crowd. Yeah. You know, so I feel like you can't really slack. You got to really always like put your put your all into the craft no matter what you're doing. You know, as a DJ, I would just say that because like it, it feels like like once you get busy and you start doing residencies yeah. and you do the same party every week for a year or two years, you like, how do I make it interesting? How do I keep going? I think the thing is to like always play for the crowd, like you mentioned. Like you got to play for the people. Different crowds, like I think sometimes playing a more intimate crowd is fun, and then sometimes playing a bigger crowd is fun. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right. Like the thing about DJing is you're learning, not learning, but you're seeing the reaction of people from music you're playing in real time. In real time. Yeah, that's a know. big one. That's Speaking same. of that, you know today's guest, man. I got a very special guest today for y'all. Um, he's not only a producer; uh, he's a record company owner. He's mm. an A and R, one of the one of the most prolific A and Rs. He started out with LaFace doing Outcast and wow. Diddy Mob and Talk about it. TLC. He actually signed TI. Wow, um, he signed TI? Yeah, he signed TI. Hold on, KP the Great signed TI? Yeah, people That's don't crazy. know that's LaFace Records. TI was signing LaFace first. Wow. Um Shout out to TI. Shout out yeah, to KP. And then KP. you know, KP went on to do um the song with Kendrick Lamar, you know what I'm saying? We gonna be all oh. right. You gotta grab me for that. Mm. He still works with Pharrell and A and R and what he's doing now is he's like one of the most sought after DJs as KP the Great. So he's Kawan wow. Prathy. He's KP before, but now, ladies and gentlemen, you know, right here on the on the, the Mind Over Music couch, I welcome my man, KP the Great. Hey KP man, you behind the motherfucking turn, 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 turn. Something I knew before, right now I can't remember what I was hoping for. Then came the moving pictures, born in the world again. I'll show you what you're missing. It's just around the bend now. Don't look back, look back. Everybody gets in the Cadillac. KP, we in here. What's up, bro? What's up? Is that it? <laughs> Man, you know, let's talk about like, cause it's very few of us can can talk about. Let's, the, the, yeah, let's, let's do a little, little toast before we start out. Here you go. Toast to yeah. being the shit. Ta toast to being the shit, baby. Um, it's very few of us that started at the time when the music industry really started around here. You was in PA was your first group, right? Yeah, I was, was the first group I was in, and we were the first group to get signed to um to to the face actually. Wait, but through was it through, was it through Rico? Was it through, through nah. the Dungeon Family? Or was it was just like well, I mean, I think we were just coming up with it. Yeah, and we didn't know we didn't, it wasn't a structure yet. Yeah. Like we were just hustling. Like Rico and them had met LA and Babyface as producers, um, and T Tion hooked us up. Yep. At um at the Baby Baby, Baby video shoot audition, like so Tion put us on. So Tion really should have <laughs> had a sign. Well, what's crazy is during that time the way they had it set up because you know Pebbles was out in the in the management the field, so she's out in the streets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was in the streets for everybody. L A and them was still kind of tucked up, yeah. And she was really kind of getting a hold of everybody, kind of bringing the artists up. Um, then at, at the same time, what was crazy is you know we wasn't accepted, right? Uh, that's when the South really was like, oh, I think it's country, especially when it came down to like hip hop dressing. and dressing. And <laughs> Like everything and, out dancing, everything that we did seemed, I guess, country to them. Like for us, it's just Southern and it's just what we do. But they looked at it as like a whole nother alien thing. You thought, because at that point, hip hop was just coming from New York. Yeah. And you had some LA, but really it, it was more New York. Like what's considered hip hop. Yeah, it was just yeah. it. And yeah. even if you were trying to do it or, or be, or, or be involved in it, you had to sound like it at some capacity. Yeah, it was I mean, just the only map for it. Yeah, but I was, yeah, I was about to say we didn't have a, another thought of what it could be. Yeah, like when we, like I was on the group we, I was in PA, we were the first group out of the Dungeon Family. Organized Noise produced our first album. Like it was the I call it the Guinea Pig Project. Yep. Like where we all figured out what we were doing, and and we figured out who did what. Like that's the period where Pebbles was like, you should be doing A and R. Like you should be on this side. Like the way that you see the room mm -hmm. could be helpful for more than just you. And I was like, okay, whatever that means. Um, and Rico, your producer, like she she was basically knighting niggas, like <laughs> <laughs> like producer, yeah, and uh, like you know, writer. Like she was, and, and she didn't recognize who was fly. Yep. Right. Like so, the benefit we had was she wasn't from New York. She was from the Bay. Mm -hmm. So it was it was some Southern shit to that. So she kind of understood us a little bit and understood what not to take away and not to change. 
it was interesting because at the same time, New York, um, we had to go to New York mm -hmm. and you had to go there to do shows. And it was the first time that mm -hmm. everybody had the kind of deals that wasn't, because look, we all thought that the, the, the local stars well, was huge, like Kilo and Raheem, Raheem the Dream. Dream. Like we, uh, you know, to me, we wanted to be, at least be them, at least mm -hmm. get to the point where, you know, and you you had no reference of what was outside of Atlanta or not. You just knew it was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you actually had the first, I think, real Atlanta group with the Hard Boys. The Hard Boys. Like yo, those are the first, yo. like, Atlanta, but they were like a Atlanta NWA. They was. So it's yeah. like, we, we were all a version of something. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like we were, we were like a Atlanta Naughty by Nature, yep. Run DMC slash thing, right? <laughs> and, but, we, but what happened was we went to New York on a, on a trip. Like we had to perform at Red Alert's birthday party and Rico went with us with PA and we had this, we had, we thought we had a great show. Yep. Like, you know, we, we performed well, you know, as a DJ, I was like on fire. And so I was doing tricks. I was doing everything I ever <laughs> saw on a, on a VHS tape. So like we rocked, but they didn't do nothing. They didn't move. So afterwards, <laughs> Puff was in the crowd and he came up to Rico and was like, yeah, it was good. But you know, it's like y'all doing like New York music. Like we, we got that already. So they're not going to give it up. Yep. And I think that sent us home on some like, huh, okay. Yeah. Like fuck them. But like, in you know, with all due respect, like yeah, I like, mean, we, it's like we're not gonna impress you by doing an impression of you. So that's right. we might as well just go be us, you know, to the fullest. It's crazy because you know, talking about the Hard Boys, um, it was Harry T. Yeah, man, it, it was just during that time. Like I said, everybody was kind of establishing their stuff around here and kind of just being like, what what is that other entrance into the music business? And luckily, when LaFace did come down mm -hmm. for all of us. Um, I remember the first time I sat with LA and, and uh, Aisha was on the radio and, and then I think another record came on like Motown Felicia. Man, you did both of these songs? And I'm like, yeah. But for us, we're in Atlanta. So yeah. we didn't even want to get out of it. We didn't really leave College Park too much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As long as it was at Skate Town. As long as we were skating. Yeah. You know, that's why I first met Rico and them at, was at the skating ring. Yep, Jelly Beans. Right at Jelly Beans, Pat, Tian. Everybody was, everybody was skating. You know, it's crazy how. Mm -hmm. You know, still to this day, that's still a you know, it's still Atlanta staple. But I feel like, you know, and I don't know if it's the same way now, but in that community, everybody came up out of there. Yeah, like all of us that was there came up out of there. Um, when do you feel like Atlanta? You know, I guess, I, I guess during the face days, like right. Yeah, I mean, we, we got, really got plugged. I feel like we got to say that because it's like that's when the information can start coming. Yeah, like we we had talent here, but we didn't know what to do with it. We didn't know where to go with it. You know, anybody could have came and said, you know, they were at a record company and we might have believed them. Like, yeah. I think about some of the managers <laughs> me and my partners I had, like, from back then, that it's like, yeah. hey, man, stop. But we didn't have any choices, right? So you see somebody come in, pull up in these little ugly trucks um, and they Range Rovers, and we're like, man, that's who? who is that? Yeah. They must know something we don't know. Yeah. So they, they brought a, a level of, um, first of all, they were impressive. But they also gave the information that they did have. What made you? Uh, what do you think? You know, at that time, especially um, in the start of all this, mm -hmm. it took on you quick. Like, how did you get Ti and them? Like, how would you, I know it was? It still wasn't that learning curve. Still wasn't easy for everybody <laughs> at the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you understand? Um, like, I think again, I like I keep putting a lot on them, but it's like having the door open to where the information was mm -hmm. was like key for me. Like. When I first got there, the first the first thing Pebbles ever did with me when we got signed was had me come to like a TLC video edit and showed me how how she was doing it and why. Mm -hmm. And like I'm like I, on one of them, I think I was writing the names on the screen. Like it's like I think it was what about your friends? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like she was showing me why, like put the name here so people know them. Like it was yeah. like branding. She was giving me game. Yep. So I was like, I like that. So I would just want to hang around her in LA or be at the office because I'm like, man, what's why? How is this working? Yeah, because y'all got money. Like all my friends, we got talent. Yep. <laughs> like how y'all get this money though? And yeah. that was it. It was like I wanted to understand how the, where the money came from. It was crazy because when the face plugged into Atlanta, uh, the actual Atlanta, the actual Atlanta, it, it, it the rest of the world was like, what's going on? Because, mm -hmm. you know. For one, we didn't have an outlet. 
So now we that got a, yeah, we got that outlet, and then everything looks like a combination of something from everywhere. <laughs> like if I had TLC was working on them, then it was like mm -hmm. you know here's a version of uh, Public Enemy mixed with this, mixed with that, mixed basically. with BBD, mixed yeah. with this, mixed with songwriting, mixed with Babyface in LA, mixed with Prince, mixed with. And I think that's one of our things. We, we figured out the gumbo effect. Yeah, was like okay, we, we're gonna have a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah, we're gonna add a little more of this though. Yeah, like once we understood we could put it heavy on the southern part. It was like, oh shit, because now we know the fundamentals. Like, we know the information, we got an outlet, and we know some of these fundamentals. Now we're going to do our shit with it. Because yep. you think about everybody that we talk about that came up in that that first wave were all talent show kids. Yeah. So we were already trying to be fly. We were, everybody was already focused on shows and yep. focused on being impressive. Yep. And we knew how to take the moments in love breakdown and put it in a bass song. And then, yeah. right, you know, it's like it was so many things that we were producing already. That's crazy because it was so cultural, like even from the cars, <laughs> even from like the the, mm -hmm. the rabbits that's painted half orange, half white with the inky wheels, half purple, half white. You mm -hmm. see the rabbit game pull up. Everything yeah, was so style. cultural that by the time we got the light shined on us, all we was doing is showing what was happening down here. Yeah. But dudes dying their tree tones, doing like you go to the skate rink, it looked just like a costume show because everybody was just mm -hmm. Coca-Cola shirts, whatever they right. deemed that was Genera, in at the time, Genera. Yeah. Yes. Jabo. <laughs> yes, everything everything with a G. Um, but 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 I think that's what it is. It's like it's attributed to a bunch of kids who, first of all, like grew up in the South where we've seen black people be be prosperous. Yeah. We've seen black people money, we've seen influence. We so we're not like never scared kind of represents how we move out here. Yeah. Cause it's like, what y'all what can y'all possibly do to us? We hadn't been outside of this bubble of protection. So our arrogance is really just based on our comfortability. Yeah, I remember times when um, somebody would try to move here. I remember when Puff was first trying to mm -hmm. move to Atlanta. Everybody started making phone calls. Yo, man, y'all, you trying to move down here? I don't know, man. What y'all think? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, it was this like this country real... is hell. Like you just call around everybody. Like, is this cool? You know what I'm saying? But we didn't know. Like we, I think once we started to to get our attention and make it, then we became really protective of it in one sense. You had to either already be down here as a lawyer, as somebody to get in to get into the trenches with us, mm -hmm. or as soon as we saw you coming from New York to LA, we just like, hold up. Yeah, you, you know like, it's, I think it's the reason why Eric did, Eric Sermon did so well, because he really did move. Yeah. Like he planted him short, you know, like them two came down, they were like, hey, we're in, we in Atlanta. Yep. And that was cool, because on top of that, they had made, they had made themselves already. And for yep. them to choose to be here, it, it said a lot. Buster, I remember one point I had like yes. a dark studio, and my studio was just Eric Sermon, Buster George Rhymes, Clinton. George Clinton, Diamond D. Um, y'all so stupid. Y'all so stupid. I mean, everybody would just be in one mm -hmm. facility. You know, George Clinton would come in and give us the Behold the Pale Horse book. And yeah, like, and give it to Buster, Buster gave it to Goody Mob. Yep. yep. And having that kind of community, you know, that's what people always say about us. And, and was, I don't know, we still that way. We've always been that way. We didn't know no better. It's like, if we mess with you, we did. If we didn't, we didn't. But yeah. our community has always been the same. It's like yeah. we always mess with you. We 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 was always that way. It was nobody like stabbing people in the back. But when the business structure started to come down here, everything started to get. When you feel like it, it started to like get like a little over hot. Um, <laughs> I think when people who didn't care to understand it start getting involved in what they thought was hot Atlanta shit. Mm. Like people who didn't come down to the city first and see, like, like there's like I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say this nigga name, but um, a really big producer signed this dude from Atlanta one time and was like pegging him the Atlanta dude, right? Mm -hmm. And he hadn't been to Atlanta. <laughs> the nigga had never been to Atlanta, so he don't know. He just got sold. He got like he got capped out. Yeah. Like, and, <laughs> and but but made a big deal about it to the point where this person was running around like I'm that nigga now, and it's like. But you not though, like none of us, like you ain't never did. No, yeah. you can't do that. No, nah. <laughs> like you can't do that. But but it's the again, it's that understanding of the wink shit. It's almost like we see each other and we know that's real. That's real. That's that that's not that that's an impersonation. Yeah, like we, we I think we just have a a keen sense of of authenticity. But, but isn't it crazy that we saw that same flip, the same flip you talking about that. If we didn't have, if we didn't sound like New York, because that's what he was known as hip hop. So if a kid came up in the last ten years, twenty years, fifteen mm -hmm. years, whatever, it sounded like Atlanta. It sounded like Atlanta. That's what hip hop sound like. So then everybody else had to sound like it. At one point, New York sounded like it. At one point, LA sounded like it because it it just it kind of did the same thing that 
that New York had did to us in the beginning. Yeah. Um, it and influenced it, us. It influenced us. Like, yeah. and it's funny, like, you think about Atlanta influences everything, right? Like, think about who Kilo Ali is, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay, like, we know Kilo. Like, we know Kilo. Yeah. Kilo got a record that got sampled by Beyonce that got Kendrick Lamar on it now. It's like, crazy. a song from late 80s. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Because Dream wrote and, yep. and that influence, like it's so, it's like what happens is Atlanta just we soak up our shit and we're we're proud of it. That's right. Like on every level of it. Yep. Like it's like it's never an issue. Like like you said, we we our community is understanding that we got all kinds. Yep. So we I fuck with Fabo like I fuck with CeeLo. Yep. Like it ain't no separation in that. It's like you're not too cool or you're not cool enough. Yep. Like you're talented, you're special. Like yeah, we fuck with each other. It was crazy to watch the 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 age of everybody building the city mm-hmm. because once it started, it's like the domino effect. You just knew like if it, at one point you're like, if I'm associated, well, if I'm doing music, it's gonna hit me at some point. Mm-hmm. Like the light gonna hit me at some point. Mm-hmm. And it got to the point where you know people start migrating to get to the light to get to that light. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I we didn't realize how young we were in that process because it, at that point it turned into business. Yeah, it turned you know? into business around us having fun. Yep. Like and and not to mention we were having fun and money was around. Yeah. Like whether or not we, it was ours all the way. <laughs> <laughs> it was there. It was there. <laughs> like I never wanted for that. Like it was all yeah. good. Like so it's like it's almost like keep the kids happy. Yeah. Like like so we were just out having fun and but being real and being honest because it's not like like you said we we might go to the strip club we might smoke we might do all that but George Clinton passed around pale white horse. We all read it. Yep. So it's like we're informed, we're entertaining, but we're informed. Yep. And we, I think, we inform people in the stuff that we do. Like there's a there's a thread in Atlanta shit that it's like a heart to it. Mm-hmm. Like the things that really work. Like when you listen to Tip, you listen to Jeezy, you listen to Future. Like there's a, still a heart in it. Like Future gonna tell you, I do love my mama, and shout it did hurt me a little bit. Yep. But fuck that shit though. Like <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But it, it but because it's, yeah. it's it it can't be. That like cap doesn't work. It don't work. It's funny because we were, um, you know, if you look at, the t- I remember even with Goody Mob when, uh, when Self Therapy first came out, you know, everybody's like, we don't know what they saying. <laughs> we, we can't understand none of that. That was like real, like, you know, and then it became popular to even be that way. Yeah. Um, it's funny how the culture just like has stuck down here so long. What do you, what do you think um, business wise was one of your biggest lessons? Mm. Out of all this, the biggest lesson would be the biggest mistake, biggest lesson. Oh no! Nah, I mean, I'm just trying to like. Fire. It's been a lot, bro. <laughs> like, like, there's so many mistakes. Like, um, <laughs> I'm like biggest. Ooh, um, you know, what I mean, I don't know if I have a, a biggest lesson, but I know one that now I understand more than anything is the idea of ownership of the ideas. Yeah, and, and being a part. Like, I, I'm cool with partnerships. I'm cool with sharing. Yep, but. I don't, I don't, um, had I known what I was doing earlier as an A&R person, understanding that some of that is production, some of that is writing still. Yep. Like, I learned that my giving heart was being received as, like, sucker shit. That will happen. You know what I'm saying? And and it took me a long time to actually, you know, understand what the, the actual contributions were. Yep. Because I've always been like, hey, man, if we good, we good. Yep. So I, I just didn't, I didn't necessarily, my lesson would have been just start paying attention to money too. I remember Kenny Face was one of the first people to tell me that I was writing, I was working on an ABC or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was like, all right, well, I'm going to leave this part open, so, so such and such. He said, wait, why are you doing that? Mm-mm. He said, you write all your songs by yourself. Why are you leaving it open for somebody to write on it? I'm like, well, just, you know, because I'm cool. I want to be balanced out. I said, man, you know, you got to learn, you're just doing that for the for the confirmation from them, but you're the one that's a songwriter on it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's crazy. I feel like the the even the features mm-hmm. start coming from, uh, in a strong sense in Atlanta because at one point everybody was just going to everybody's studio mm-hmm. and the managers couldn't even keep up with. No, bro, it, listen, it wasn't even about that no more. As a and person, there was a moment where I was like, "Shit, you did, just, just let me know what you did." Like, so I know when the call comes. Like, just hit me tomorrow. Like, yep. I, I really, I don't care. I, first of all, I don't care because it's like, bro, like, be creative. 
er, it, like that's again that's a, another one of our superpowers yep. it's like the ability to collaborate and to get each other like those moments they happen more frequently here yeah because it's people genuinely appreciate and see each other right so it's like and shout it you booming yep <laughs> Let me get over there where you at. Yep. Like we learned that from Buster. Yep. Like, <laughs> like, let me see where that thing at, and I'm I'm over there with it, and and I'm gonna do my thing on it. I was seeing VPA and our at Def Jam at Island, right? Mm -hmm. And, and I was uh, one of them too. You was, you was one, one of them too. <laughs> uh, but it was crazy. I'm sitting in a meeting mm -hmm. with the whole staff up there, and Jeezy sent a record in, and they said, "Okay, nothing listed. List a few songs. Everybody's yeah, yeah, yeah. Said, okay. So what do you guys think the single is?" I said, what? <laughs> what? What do you guys think the single is? I said, are you really asking everybody around this New York table what Jeezy's single is? I said, well, for one, you would, none of y'all would ever know. Why you didn't ask him? He's the one that's going to tell you what the single is. Yeah, so ain't, is you're not even in the streets down there. And I said, why are we having this conversation? You he know probably what? said, it's probably the first one. Yeah, Whatever yeah. the first one he played, he brought yeah. down the single. Like. <laughs> I'm like, why are you doing that? He's selling his mixtapes at the gas station like everybody else on Northside Drive yeah, because you're taking too long to, to make a decision on on stuff like that that you don't even know what you're talking about in the first place. Um, but then got to a point now where, you know, A and R, and I want to ask you how you feel about this because <laughs> where's the A and R person? Do you think the A and R person is still there? Is there a spot for that A and R person still there? Because to me, I think there's a artists spot. don't really make it to to be. It's it's almost impossible if you make it as a superstar. Without A and R, without somebody's hands on you the whole way, at well, least like, I, I I think the role is different now, right? I, I think, and, and by the way, shit, what based on what you just said, right? The right A and R with the right artist is really important. Mm -hmm. Like, I've I, I I didn't manage Tip in the beginning, but as an A and R person, I I knew what was going on in the label. I knew what was going on with other records. I I had a lot of information. Yeah. So I can see where you are and where you where we could possibly get better, right? Like, or how we can fit you, like, where you fit in the rest of the shit you have no idea about. Yep. And I actually see you for real. So I know what, when I'm watching people around you, I notice when they light up, I know when they they get back down. Yeah. So I'm just trying to push more of that. The thing that I see people light up for, let's sell that. Yeah. Like, because it's no different than a coach. Like, music, I, I know somebody else said this on some, because uh, I saw it on Instagram, but it's a thought that I've always had. It's like... Our business doesn't require a gatekeeper or or a, a, a point of entry. Mm -hmm. Now, no, it no longer has that. Yeah. So you don't have to meet somebody, a football coach, you know, a basketball coach, somebody don't, somebody who can say that boy's special. Like, okay, let's put like let's put him through these drills. Let's give him. He can do extra. He's mm -hmm. going to be a leader of the team. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it's a lot of talented people. Like, we got so many records out right now because there are a lot of talented people. We don't have a lot of stars out yeah. because there's not a lot of cultivating. And that's what ANR like. That's what a spot usually it used to be for. Yeah. Now ANR is based on affordable help. It's like someone who yeah, is cool a, enough to go hang out. I don't have to pay them as much. I got to pay somebody who knows. Yeah. I, but but they're gonna go out here and and, and put on for us. Yep. And and they're not even doing it with a lot of purpose sometimes. Like there are obviously some some good A and R people out here. I know a couple, but the vast majority are just waiting for somebody to get hot and then to go take a picture. Yep. And like I just signed this nigga. Like it's like the the I'm fucking with. I feel like the, you still you still yeah. gotta have a gut feeling somewhere. To me, it's like it's weird to listen to a song that you know is dope and then you look at it and they say, well, no, it's not dope. Look at the numbers on it. And you're like, well, no, it's kind of hand in hand. You gotta, yeah. you know. But that's belief, like that. That's the human part, right? Like yeah. music is still human. Like entertainment, for the most part, is based on human reaction. And mm -hmm. most people, no, no, that's a, that's a weird one. Not most. Uh, there are a lot of people who are in these positions who aren't there from feeling. They're for there sure. for from research and from, you know, understanding a pattern in 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 data. Yeah. And I, I just feel like you know if you're doing stuff by data, you're doing it based on something that already happened. You're never gonna catch the new thing. See. That's why I feel like when I go to the labels now and I walk in and it's dead quiet. And then like no music, no, no, no music sound. nowhere. Yeah. It's like it's the weirdest feeling. It's almost like you, you want to whisper while you in there, like what you know, what's going on? Like, but yeah, everybody's looking at style. numbers and they're not listening to music. They're, li they're looking at the numbers. Mm -hmm. Um and I feel like at some point Well, you know, that doesn't happen like like in other other genres, right? Like it's still people who just listen to the music. 
mm-hmm. and, and like country music, mm-hmm. pop music. But that's crazy. Well, when you look at it, yeah, you're right because it's no entry point like that for. I mean, they, it is all day, but it's not like it's not the same kind of entry point. Of course, hip hop has just like you know, it's through the roof because it's easy, easily attainable, and easier, easier. Well, our, our cultural rules have have made it different. Like, if I'm on, you got to be on. Whether or not you're as good as I am or not, I'm on. So now you on. Yeah. So it's like it it creates a little bit more clutter. It does. That's true. How do you feel about like what music is now? Like, what what is it? Just, what, what's your take on the temperature of music now? Oh, it's just it's in that space where it's time for someone to be cool enough to be new. Yeah. Like we we at the we at the what do you call it? The uh, redundant space. Yeah. Like we have the stars, we have future, we have Gucci, we have tips, we have um, the Migos, we, we, we get a little baby. We got, we got stars, but there's so many people like them that they kind of water down the idea of what they are. Yeah. Because again, it's like, you know, once people catch the algorithm, they, they ride their rhythm on out, you know? That's one thing you do miss that, like in 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 the South, well, especially in the Atlanta period. At one point, everything is about how collected can you be. Mm-hmm. It was like okay, how we special. we know we got this part, but now how can we freak it out? Yeah, you know whether it was joy, whether it was like the cast or fishbone or like up, just right? give like. I mean, it was. It, I, I feel like that. I'm waiting on that difference to come. I haven't really heard that difference all the way here to that extent now. Well, flip we, like that. I've seen a lot of different. I just haven't heard a lot of substance under it. Like, because mm-hmm. our different was based on us seeing Parliament, right? right? But we listened to those records. Like, we they were, they were smart records. They were talented people on those records. Yeah. Like, they're, they're extraordinary people. Like, people who were so talented that they could be that high and make that music. <laughs> That's how dope them niggas was. Yep. Right? Like, so it, it meant they knew what they were doing. It's like, now we just get the high part. And and it, we get a lot of, um, what do you call this shit? Um, what, what is it? Train, not train of thought. Um, that'll come to me. But, like, people just saying what's on their mind, like, at yeah. the moment. But it don't necessarily be connected. It be like a bunch of tweets. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's a bunch of, yeah. I was, was um. Okay. Yeah, it's not necessarily it's not a lot of songwriting right now. So I think that's the the big deal. Like mm-hmm. there are a lot of talented people, but it ain't a lot of people writing a lot of songs for us. Like we're 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 heavy in the club. All our songs are about the club. Yep. Um, and it's not a lot of songs you can ride home to. It's not a lot of. And what's crazy is how from our, from R and B standpoint, it really got taken over by to me forms of R and B that just. Like the same thing off the top of your head, emotional, but, I, but, I, but <laughs> yeah, still, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get the, I didn't get the hook, I didn't catch it. Those are vibes. <laughs> like, those vibes. These are uh, so on the um on the, a lot of vibes. It, it, it's a lot of vibes. I feel like though music is is finally kind of place where I guess because it is so many, you know, you go by moods now when you go to you don't go by genres like when you go to Spotify. Like what mood are you in? Mm-hmm. Is it like the jog? Is it to go sleep? Is it this? <laughs> is it the um, but I feel like but for some reason, and I don't know if it's just, I don't know why it is. I just feel like it's, it's more narrow. Well, I, I, first of all, I, this, okay, this, I want to correct myself. I think a lot of it is where we are in our lives now, right? We're not in the, the same level of discovery that we were when mm-hmm. we were, you know, creating mm-hmm. and, 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 and shifting shit. Mm-hmm. We, we've, we've done that. And, and I think the problem is, or, or what we're missing is, by now, the things that get to us now should be great already. Like, I, this is how I feel. Yeah. I feel like my kids should have already filtered through, you know, the mediocre <laughs> shit. So that the shit I did, be, it should be jamming like fuck. Like, it should yep. be that shit. Yep. And now we, we don't, we're not, we're not getting a lot of the, um, the 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 filtering system is, is kind of clogged up. So we, because I, I every night again, not every night again, every day actually, I hear a song. I'm like, oh shit, this that shit. Yeah. Why ain't nobody talking about this? Like, because every single person in the world is talking about Pound Town. <laughs> like, because I mean, I'm saying the algorithm has led every single person to that song. It sure has. There's not a like, person that I, like that's that. It, it's crazy because when you um. 
you know, it's all. Shout out to Tay Keith, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Whenever, hard as fuck. <laughs> whenever you can one up somebody by going under, you know, mm -hmm. like it's like you got you go you just go lower and lower to be higher because it's like. Yeah, because it's like, well, here's the thing. It, once you understand the algorithm, it's almost like, who's to blame at, at the point where I know you're going to do this? Yeah. It, 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 and I hate to make it the comparison, but it's like drugs sell themselves, right? Like, that's something somebody wanted to say so yeah. bad. It just never had the, 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 the thought to put that together. It's, it's amazing when you... <laughs> It's amazing out of all the words and phrases you can still hear a phrase and a word in a song that you never heard before. I said that about Cardi B when she's like, "These is blood." She <laughs> was like, yeah. "It's amazing that you can still have a phrase that nobody heard before that strikes that strikes a nerve and strikes the tension." In you. Yeah, like oh shit, like and and again, like so. Here's my thing. I think like I like I do everything. It's like there's a place for all this shit, right? There's there's a there's a moment where I'm I want to see that happen. Cause I can't believe it too. Like I'm like, look at this shit. Like when I play that record as a DJ, it's like the first time I felt like I was almost selling crack to the community. Like, cause I was like, <laughs> I know they gonna fuck with this. Oh man, am I wrong? It's got the same shock value, man. It's hard to find shock value in songs too. It's no, hard to find and, and because they're like, not usually jamming. Yep. Like usually the shock song is just a shock song. Yep. That song is jamming. It's jamming and it's got shock value to it at the same time. It is like jamming. <laughs> what's crazy is. We've been listening to it in Europe. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Europe. It's like Pound Town, just left Pound Town. They don't even know where Pound Town at. Well, they, <laughs> they like that shit. They know uh, she said a true thought in that song. The whole record song, <laughs> the whole <laughs> record, like, true, like, love you, baby. <laughs> That's it. One time, take it. What do you feel like um, in, in, in moving forward in music? Like mm. what, you, what you working on now? Like what you feel like the next, the never is? Okay, so as a DJ, I, I, I decided I wanted to make records I could play. I want, so I, or records that I felt like I wanted to play that weren't there. Yep. Like, like I get to a place where it's no up tempos. Yep. And because, you know, again, as a South, we've taken over an hour 70, that 65 to 75 tempo. That's it's us. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, we got that. Yeah. So, but it's not a lot of stuff you can play when people want to party and dance. Yeah. So I'm like, I decided to put some records together and and get some of my friends, producers, writers, artists, and just make some jam and dance music. Yeah, it, it's funny when you have DJs. Now, a lot of times, even my dance, my house DJ friends like Felix, mm -hmm. I'm like, man, play your records. Why you want to play your song? So, mm -hmm. um, but when you, to me, having that having that outlet to have an audience for it, um, I think every DJ really, you know, when you look at it like that, if, you, if you're a DJ that produces and make music, then it's just nothing more gratifying than playing your record and having and having that instant audience, that instant gratification to it also. Yeah, but and it's also like, for me, it's, it's the gratification of being able to do shit with my friends. Yep. It's like, you know, shit, like, it's just some, it, like, if we don't put pressure on it, and have fun, the shit usually come out jamming. Yeah. Like, it's usually, like, not stressful. It's usually, like, it really feels like it's supposed to feel. Yeah. And I think people have a comfortability knowing that I want them to be the shit, so they'll do a record with me that they may not even normally do for themselves. What, what, what's your favorite record you think you've, you may have been a part of? Been a part uh, ooh. <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't have to call. Oh, you don't have to call. Yeah, that's a good one. Like that just, I just that just felt good. Like it's all, yeah. it always feels good. Like it felt the first time I heard it. It does, it does feel that way. Actually, you was working with Pharrell and them like long ago, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, when I, I work, I, I actually head of head of um, I am Mother as far as the music goes. I'm I run his music company. And then what do you uh, what do you look for in artists like? When you're looking at artists for the, you know back to that example again, like we look to cultivate artists, they're mm -hmm. kind of what do you kind of look for look for under that umbrella because you know Pharrell uh, he, I mean, I think, shout out to Pharrell you know dope he is yeah culturability um, culturability like you know like special first mm -hmm. but cultural like because I think um, yeah it goes back to the first question it's like there's so many dope talented people but there are not a lot of listeners that part like everybody know everything already because they've been on their phone on their algorithm and they don't know their phone just talking to them and and they yep. think they know everything and yep. it's like and until something happens and they're like oh shit yep you know it's like it, 
what I'm looking for is just special people who want to be great. That thin line now is in, like you said, though, the the listening curve and the coachability and the work. Like the work, the work ethic is still different. And I, you know, I, I was talking about this before. Like I, I see some artists that like super work. Mm -hmm. like obsessively super, super work. And you see the results in that, you mm -hmm. know, even if they're indie artists or whatever, then you see some artists that think they're doing the same thing as that artist or think they're doing the same thing as mm -hmm. the big artist that's making it, but they be on the phone like for three days straight, not doing nothing with it. Not yeah. even, you know. Yeah, just scrolling. You find it hard, harder when you're dealing with a younger artist now to, to get that, that hustle, that different kind of, that energy in them? I'll be honest, no, nah, I mean, I think it's still the same. I think that, okay, so, and this is just in my eyes, I think it's exactly the same. It's the same ratio of really dope people to people who can do shit. Mm -hmm. um, and, or, or people who are talented. Um, like, I say this, like, I'm this is an example, right? Um, you remind me, the Usher record, right? Yep. That record, the producer and writer and his sister, they wrote this record for him as an artist. Butter, they wrote, it, butter. they wrote it for? For Eddie, for, for Eddie Hustle. Okay. So they wrote it. It was his record, right? Yeah. Now, I'm working on Usher, who I know his work ethic. I know if he get a hit, what he, he I know what he gonna do with what it. He gonna do with it. Yep. He gonna he gonna do everything that yep. everything necessary to make this record the biggest record on, on in the world, right? That he can do within his power. Yep. I don't know that for sure about the the producer. I, me personally, right? I don't know that. Like, but I know this is a great song. It's a talented person who deserves to get paid off of his talent, right? Mm -hmm. So my thing is, if we can get everybody who does something to contribute to the thing and do it like a like a team, yeah. like who is the quarterback? Who is the point person? Who is the star? Who is the the front man for this team to get paid? Like, because yeah. I want everybody to get paid and not have to ask for shit. Yeah, like because I feel like that's when we make the best music. Or the best creative shit. Like when mm -hmm. you ain't needing and you can just think when you're dope. Mm -hmm. Like when you dope and not stressed, nigga. Like think about the records you done made. <laughs> <laughs> best feeling ever. Shit. Yeah, it's like you just noticing shit. Like man, that is nice as fuck. Yeah, like it's the freedom. You know. Yeah, so I'm like shit. My I'm like on an uh, emancipation mission. Like if we can just get everybody paid who dope, and but the key is playing positions. Yeah. Like if everybody like even I'm I'm making a record, but it's still gonna be about putting other people in a in a spotlight that they can be seen in mm -hmm. properly. Like mm -hmm. that's what my whole career has been. How do you find a balance though in dealing with? Because a lot of art, artists that and we've been through, a couple of artists we, we we've kind of dealt with that mm -hmm. that thing where. Um. I don't want to say the artists get in their own way because the we artists are always, yeah, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the artists get in their own way. Yeah, we created it. Like, it, here's the thing. This, this is what I'm saying about having another person who you trust to understand creative, yep. like the a &R shit, is based on we make up shit for a living. Mm -hmm. Everything we do, we've kind of figured out a way to make up some version of it in our imagination to, mm -hmm. to and, and figured out a way to communicate it to people for them to be like, yeah, f hell yeah. Yep. Right? So, artists get that way because they keep creating sometimes they create problems and them shit seem as real as the as the cool <laughs> shit so it's like you know you you looking at somebody else who's performing well this day you're not at that space today because you might just be in the process of recording you might just be in the process of your cycle the creative part but you see somebody booming and and you looking over there trying to see how yeah. how they getting this time and it's like don't worry about that. Like you're creating a problem that don't exist. This person probably ain't thinking about you. Like, you know what I'm saying? It, mm -hmm. So it's like those moments where it's like you can create the problems to to put the to you can you can add turbulence to your your shit. What would you tell the artist now? If if you could if you had an artist that was just listening, what would the first what would be the first thing you would tell them? I would say look at the people in the room the first day everybody agreed that this shit was dope and try to keep that room together. That's a good one. And that's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But I'm saying try. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like there's something about a combination of people that, that everybody complimented and didn't let some slip out or didn't let some go in that didn't need to be there. It's like mm -hmm. it's something about like I look at the LaFace system, right? Like none of us had these jobs because we were we woke up one day thinking we were gonna do this job. 
Yeah. But somebody noticed that all these niggas was doing shit mm-hmm. and said, let's get them, let's get in them the to do it. proximity <laughs> <laughs> so that they can talk to each other and just figure that shit out because they got it. Mm-hmm. But but somebody created a place for us to be there, right? Like somebody helped create a, a structure. Mm-hmm. So what what artists don't have now is structure. Everybody's going from their bedroom, that laptop in the bedroom to famous. Yeah. With no training in between. That's true. And how you gonna tell somebody who boom and that they don't know what they're doing? You can't. <laughs> you can't. No matter how much you tell them, you can't. And um even down to like, you know, you, you talk to artists, I would talk to them all the time about financial shit. Mm-hmm. Um, just because those fires everybody been through and be like, hey man, you know, they don't take your taxes out. They, you know, they're looking at your Instagram and you put all that money by your ear. They, yeah, they know, you know that's theirs. Yeah, they're just sitting there watching you. Um, and I feel like I would, you know, I want to sound generational, but. No, I mean, but. You know, I think that, you know, if you look at all the peers and all the people in our, in, in our peer groups, who was, all, who was always trying to get to the next. So, you know, how do we get our own? Either you're going to have a label or you're going to have a yeah. this or you're going to have a that. Always trying to mark off the. Spots. I don't the feel mogul, like the, the mogul chart. I don't feel like the mogul <laughs> chart exists in the in the in the younger squads right now. Do no, you? it's it's just it goes from starting to boss. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's not, the in between part. Like they're not getting that inf- that information and that experience in between. And like when you say now, like okay, it's because I'm kind of big on this. Like we're grown now, right? We we've grown through this shit. Yeah. Like luckily we're still in. You know we're not we don't look like what we've been through. Like tips, like. <laughs> but we we have some information that should be given if somebody wants it right so i'm like i just i just say everything right i just yep. say everything and whoever want this shit gonna pick it up like i i've learned now not to care if mm. you're listening or not i'm just gonna make sure i say it mm. because i know you don't know this it's impossible for you to know you ain't had the experience you haven't had a experience and experience that would give you this context before. If you never like artists who ain't never been on tour, they don't know that yeah. it sounds crazy when you're rapping over your your words. They don't care. Yeah. Don't like care. nobody said nothing. I've seen motherfuckers not say the whole song. Just do this. <laughs> Cause they don't have the breath control because they never done it before. Yep. And ain't nobody saying nothing. It's <laughs> but old people. <laughs> yeah, old people's like, man, please, what are they doing? Yeah, and, uh, and and again, I, I think we were talking about this before we started taping. Um, me and Castro knew. the The thing is, average has become the new, the new, sh- the new dope. For sure. Yeah. For yeah. sure. 100%. Like it's almost like when they tell you you're talking white because they don't want you to use words that they don't usually use. Yeah. It's like no, nah, man. We should be trying to push each other and pull each other. Like I'm not saying I should speak in a way that you don't understand me. That I'm not. It's never condescending. It's never that. But it's like yeah. we should. Aspire to do some different shit. Use some different words every now and again. That, you think it's a product of? I mean, you look at it also. Like you didn't have it. They didn't have. They didn't have social media. You didn't have the the thing that gave you an ego. So like, for us, <laughs> we were working with artists coming up. Mm. It was like they didn't have nothing to do. With, they were excited to listen to you. Right. They, they were excited to be like, oh, what do we do now? We dance until when? Where it is, where mm-hmm. you know, saying this now, stay up all night singing it. Sing yeah, in front of this work person. It isn't, do it now, okay, hit it. You know, yeah. um, but at the same rate, you didn't have as many. You know, right now they can look at it. They they can shy away from their phones. They see a bad comment or see something else. They want to take all they. They want to take all their pictures down. Or take <laughs> all their, like, do you feel like it's just? Because I I kind of feel like the endurance level is different. Look, man, you're um, gonna be soft if you ain't never been hit. Like, like that's just how the shit work. Like that's what I'm saying. You ain't had no experience in between yeah. the house and famous. Yeah. So it's almost like you got out of the house because the first thing you did, everybody agreed that it's something special and cool about it. Mm-hmm. Now the thing is, they don't know nothing else about you yet. They ain't never heard you talk. They ain't never went through your your past Twitter feed. They don't know nothing yet. Yeah. But the day that they start caring, they start learning. And if you're not set up for them to learn about you in a way that you can handle, because the thing is, they're going to learn a bunch of shit. You you like, man, but I was in high yeah. school and, and it's all this shit going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and you're be like, ah, because you weren't prepared for this to work. Nobody was there. What you're saying, listen, so let me tell you what happens the day after you get a hit. That part right there. Even I mean, everybody's so excited around that for their own excitement. <laughs> That if you ain't got your <laughs> own shit together, they like, man, look what I did. We got it going. 
Um, yeah. It's but I you know it makes me wonder. I just know in them posts it ain't never no fans in there. It's just niggas that they know. <laughs> We're killing this shit. <laughs> like where the fans at though? <laughs> How important do you think the machine is now compared to like we we were talking about the machine we had. We had a system and literally you could walk up there. <laughs> turn it into the machine, <laughs> and next thing you know, it, it was all over the world. It was coming out everywhere on TV and everything yeah. else. How, how important do you think that still is to this day? I think, I don't know if it's the machine to me, but the structure, structure is always gonna be important. Mm -hmm. And if that structure come, if the only structure you have is that, then it's, it's, it's everything. But like, if you look at the people who are successful the most right now, they have these siloed, the, these, these small teams mm -hmm. that run and direct that machine. Yeah, like that's the part I like about now. Like, there's a control. If you yeah. can do it right, you really can control shit. Yeah, you can be, you can handle. Yeah, it's on you. But that's the thing. That's if you have the experience around you or with you or in you to be able to do it. If you don't, yeah, go to, go get. A, I mean, listen, I ain't saying go do a bad deal, but get with a company that understands you, or a team of people that understands you that can can help you navigate through some of this shit that you about to go up go up against. Yep. Cuz it's you just it's not like it makes no sense if you've never done it. The people I've seen that <laughs> that that never done it end up there you end up shooting themselves in the foot. Every time. Every time. Cuz they think I think people think that once you have a success in something that means people like you. That's true. They don't like you, they like that. Yep. Yep. And if you do that a couple more times, I might start thinking about, I might like you. This might have something to do with you. But for now. <laughs> but for now, I like that. <laughs> so it's like, but people get hyped up on that shit. And you find it harder to get people like like songs these days. Like, you oh, know, you can't so, get nobody else's song. Yeah. You, you can't show up and be like, yo, we got this hit record for you. Check the this out. The only person, uh, ironically enough, the only person who accepts hit records now is like Beyonce, Usher, and like yeah. the people who, who are winning. Yeah. But how, that real estate is this big. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody can't be on that. That's a trip. Yeah. But that's also what made, you know, like it or not, like we found new artists mm -hmm. and you handed them a song that was out of their, I would say out of their realm of writing or making themselves. And you put that gem on somebody new, like you were saying before, it takes that team, then they deliver it. Mm -hmm. Then the producer writer did it. Then you got, then the, the, the sparks start happening, mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like you still have that in some big pop acts, but yeah, that's just been, been part of a secret. I was sitting with a, talking to another artist the other day and he was saying, no, man, I'm not collaborating with nobody. Why? And Ever? <laughs> he, he's just like, I'm not doing it. I'm just like, I don't know. I, and I said, well, are you trying to make sure that first you make sure people are knowing that you're doing it first? Because, you know, and he, he made a good point. It's like, now you can't get lost in the sauce because it is 10, 20 producers on a record. You don't know who did what. Okay. That's fair. So I, that's okay. That's fair. Uh, by the way, I, I get that. Like, <laughs> I understand. Like, why would you bust it down to nothing? Yeah. Like, I get that. Like that. But I'm. But what I. But I think. Know your strengths, right? Like, mm -hmm. like, because some people are writers in the way that they conversate. Like, they may trigger yeah. something in someone who is melodically inclined, and someone who is lyrically inclined to expound on it in a way that. You are a writer and you good yep. like you are part of the process of this coming to life. Yep. You don't have to sit down and use all your words because they you only got five. <laughs> cause you cause you cause you don't write every day. No. You don't write songs every day. That's not what you think about every day. You only think about it when somebody says, I need a song. And at one point, when you look at some of the greatest you know, records that's been made on some of the greatest artists, mm -hmm. you know, they were handed to him by Clive would be like, yo, Singing, singing this, this. <laughs> Gerald Buzzwell, you'd be like, you're singing this, <laughs> yeah. you know, I would heard again, you're singing this, you're singing this, you're singing this. Yeah. Because it's a difference in between a lot of times, you know, when you find that artist that is well, that Okay, I got a question because as a producer, a writer and artist too, right? Do you think they did that because that was a record company telling them or they thought that person, they trusted? Like, what? what I mean, what was the, what was the difference? They had no choice. Like, what was it? Like, well, when somebody's paying you out that kind of money, like, for one, you probably didn't have a choice. Or the, when we gave you the chance, it wasn't. It was always, you know, like, you go appease yourself. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. if I if I 
know that you know these people are making hits so these people have hit records of they or they you know know something you don't when it comes to your writing mm -hmm. then i, I don't want to bank on them and it sometimes it used to get so bad it'll just like you know what we don't even need to hear the records just call them let max and them do it mm -hmm. max and them do it put it out mm -hmm. um because his track record is so good at max martin mm -hmm. Um, and Neptune's got the same way just to do it. Put it out. They did it. Let's go with it. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know. I didn't know the other I, one. I didn't know the other one was it. So <laughs> yeah. They did it. Just put it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's funny as shit. But it's, it's, it's uh, you know, but it was, but it was also a combination thing. It was something that said, hey, if you take this combination, like, same thing with Scrubs, you know, Scrubs mm -hmm. is Candy and, and Tiny's record. Mm -hmm. And almost the same thing you yeah, said about the Usher record. I went over there, I heard the record. I'm like, man, you know, this will be a big record on TLC. Yeah. We'll make it a single. Oh, you will? For sure? Yeah, you let Chili sing it. She ain't never really she did ain't the had leads. A she ain't had her you know, so all those combinations put together is what made the song a hit. Yeah. You know, and I feel like, yeah, seeing artists now, you do feel like that struggle is in. I do see them go like. No, because if you think uh, about it, and you know, I love my Tion. Tion didn't like that record. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's like she didn't want to do it. Like it wouldn't have gotten done. Yeah, if it was on her. Yeah, it's all it's all that combination of the magic man put together on yeah. it. Is it any artist you've seen um, that that you feel like and in, 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 is on that horizon coming up to? Because I'll be looking, and it's not looking. that I don't see talented artists. I wouldn't say that. I was gonna say no. I, like there are a lot of people I like. I like Lucky Day. I like yeah. um, Keanu La Day. I like uh, Baby Keem. Lil Baby is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Um, I, no, I like a lot of sh I like a lot of shit, but a lot of times, uh, not not those artists particular, but a lot of times I just end up hearing a song that I like. I don't hear yeah. a lot of continuity in art. Yeah, to be able to feel like it's about the artist. You think they took it away from from it being in the from from the singles market or from the? Do you think that had an effect on? Because I don't feel like I. I think it's, it's a scrollers market, nigga. Like it ain't. Yeah, I don't. I don't feel like I felt the project. That I was just kind of like, oh man, here it is. I see this whole record as I listen to it. What was the last thing I'm trying to think? Because I feel like I just came out of somebody, Killer Mike. Well, now he's Kill, not well, new. He's not. He's new, not though. new though. Yeah, yeah. But the Killer Mike album jamming. Yeah, Killer Mike album is off the like, chain. Um, it is. But again, he came up through a understanding of. He he's gone through the experience, and he's gonna have intellect in the way he's putting his records together. It's yeah. not just like throwing on, the, like, yeah, yeah. It ain't trying to make a hit for the algorithm. It's it's actually trying to make a project that you can appreciate. Atlanta's, you know, if we're talking about the fifty years of hip hop, mm -hmm. and how many artists that I, mean, it's, I was looking through it because we're putting together, you know, a fifty years of hip hop experience for Atlanta, mm -hmm. and I started to look through the artists and man, and it was just like, dang. I mean, it's it's it it's been a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of artists, mm -hmm. uh, ton of successful ones too. Mm -hmm. um, but, but a lot, but of a lot of <laughs> artists. Man, there was at a point there was a moment in, I feel like like five years ago, where every month there was a new hottest artist. <laughs> yeah, it was. Like, do you understand how crazy that shit sound? Mm -hmm. Like this nigga next. And it's still, you can still take the Southeast and still take like Southern markets. We can still take the West Coast. The markets are still big enough for a person to blow up in them mm -hmm. before they even get outside of uh, outside Texas, of the market to South Texas. Um, oh, Toby. I love Toby. Um, no way, babe. Um, it's great. I, I like him because he, his, his, his art, it's like it's, you actually feel like you, you're investing in something. You do. You do. You feel like you you feel like you you watching and you you investing in and, and listening to art at the same time. Yeah, I do agree to that one. Yeah, so it's like I'm I'm trying to think. It's like it, it's a couple of things I just really a couple of artists I like a couple, of, but mostly songs. You look at DJs now, you know, and and the rise of how they mm -hmm. turned into super DJs. Yes, <laughs> right. You ain't got to take nobody on the road. You got to just go play your records. Is you know you look at that as being like is that the road you want to take to be that to be that. That big of a DJ, or do you, or you like being, you like being kind of like, okay, I can still control my, I like environment. I, I'm, I'm, I think I still have a certain anxiety of that, of, of a certain amount of uh, <laughs> attention. <laughs> like, I mean, I just, I mean, like, because yeah. I feel like I don't know if my personality is set up for that. Yeah, like, cause I've been said some shit, and it all crumbles <laughs> to the ground, like, based on you know, like <laughs> me being me. So I like. Being able to go play records, play a festival, um, 
but I love that I can call my folks and be like, hey, you want to come out and do this? Yeah. Because, you know, it's going to be this many people, you know, if you ain't doing it tonight, you know, shit come through. I, I feel like it gets a little bit like, <laughs> after it gets past a certain audience, it just turns in, it turns into super huge. Yeah. And I, I, I but, but I, I'm okay. Here's the thing. I'm not scared of it. Let me not say that because that's, that's, that's actually a lie. I'm uncomfortable with the idea of having to be on like, all the time. Uh, like as a, yeah. cause I, my friends are all superstars. Mm -hmm. Like, like I got full, really like some of the biggest, <laughs> <laughs> most known people on earth Yeah, that I don't like hanging with because of how on, like, you know, it's a, that's the job is on once it's on. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, I'm just now getting to a place where I'm like, okay, I love DJing so much that whatever comes with it, I'm cool with. I'll fuck with that. That's how I feel about it, I guess, too. Yeah. What was the first song? I always ask everybody this. What was the first song that that made you that that moment that you felt like and heard like and just in your system click to you like you be emotionally connected to it? Or was the record that led you to like, okay, this is what I want to do? <laughs> oh, that was, it's easy actually. So, ring my bell. I need a ward. <laughs> it is like I, I, because I, 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 I just just distinctly remember playing that record one night before my mom and them was about to go out, and when I played it, they lost their shit. Like they were like, oh, yes. you know, it was like it was one of the moments. I'm like, I did that. <laughs> like I made that decision. Like and I really just made it based on the fact that I like it was a palm tree on the album. Yep. Like it was like I can't remember TKO records, I think. Yep. But it was like a palm tree. I was like, this look cool. And I just put this on. And when it happened, I saw them change. And I was like, oh shit. Now, now thinking about what that record's about, that shit is crazy. Cause it's like a city girl record now. Like, <laughs> like yeah, sure. anytime, anywhere, ring it. <laughs> like, oh, it's like, but but yeah, it's like. Yeah, it, that that was the record that made me go, man. I like I like the way that made them feel. Yeah, see, that's that. I think that that reaction from music period, you know, whether it's like me playing for playing it for somebody or even them like sitting saying the record. I mean, my my whole goal was to just see a record spend one name on it at some point. Mm -hmm. Well, the record that made me like you know the, the first thing most never got was this Lionel Richie record. Still, ooh, like. So that's yeah. that's the first, I used to cry every time he was that singing suspense that moment song, where like, right before still. still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's great. Now, but, okay, so I'll say this: outside on the DJ shit, yes, that's that record. That's the record that no matter what is going to be. But the first record that that made me think, like, oh shit, was Rocket Love, Stevie Wonder. Because uh, the way my brain worked, I'm like, yeah. how he know what that looked like. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like you took me uh, riding on your rocket, gave me a start, and then a yeah. half a mile from heaven, you dropped me back down to the cold world. How you know it was a half a mile away? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it was that as a kid. Like, that thought was like, this thing ain't blind. But, <laughs> but it lets you know how, you know, how God works at that point. I was, I was listening to... And I, as I look back now, I'm like, man, how's my mom and them let me listen to all this? But <laughs> be uh, I was just George Clinton and, and Funkadelic and Parliament and Bootsy and all that, like, and looking through the covers and, you know, reading the lyrics and crazy shit. Going to the concerts and all that when I was like little. Um, and I feel like. Hey, thank God. It, it's kind of like, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I kind of hate it for people that don't get to see it, that don't get to really experience real musicians playing like the hell out of some instruments, jamming without no sequences, without no. Yeah, so I think music it sets into your bone, it sets into your body a different way when you can appreciate the, all the instrumentation and look at what, what's really happening. Yeah, it, but um, the same way you go to a football game, you appreciate somebody really doing well there. You go to a, you appreciate LeBron different because you uh, and Kobe different because you understand how much they put into it. So them playing becomes this beautiful thing to watch. Yeah. So it's the same thing with musicians or or artists, anybody who put time into the thing they care about, and then they go out here and have fun doing it for you. Yep. Yeah, that shit different. Well, what would you tell somebody, like, when you get to the point where, you know, all of us get to that point where we got a, a block, or we stuck, or mm -hmm. we don't feel like what we're doing is in the right way or the right path, I want more out of it or something like that. Like, what do you, you know, like, like how do you get over those blocks? So those, or what keeps you motivated, basically? I've always been motivated because I got kids. 
<laughs> like and the motivation not just because they gotta eat but because they're doing shit every day that i've never seen mm-hmm. or never experienced they put they made me have to think about shit different about everything i think about mm-hmm. so i'm i don't know that i'm ever blocked because i pay attention to other people mm-hmm. like i think you get blocked when you when you start having a um remix feelings or remix ideas it's because you're not doing nothing new you're not seeing nothing new mm-hmm. like there's a point where you you can only say you know if it's just based on your words it's only so much you can say you right. what happens and you know as a songwriter somebody might just say some random shit to trigger everything else Yep. It triggers the memory of when you were here doing this, and then you get this analogy from that, and you can plug all these experiences in. That's what makes you a dope writer. Like you, like you live a hell of a life, my nigga. Like, like when you think about all the things you do, you you have access and context from Gumball three thousand to Madonna to you know what I'm saying. It's all yes. these experiences, and because you're always living it, you can you can access it. Yeah. That's what I always say about, you know, your eyes can only, you know, you can only can see and imagine. Like, when you, when you start going overseas and you start, even when I was younger, I was like, I was so Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And so, like, you know, I was like 27 before Lenny was like, yo, you've been, to, you've been to London, right? You've been to Europe. You've been to Paris. You've been there. And I was just like, mm-hmm. nah, man, I've been here at the studio in Atlanta. Yeah. Killing like, shit. Dude, you got to get out of here so you can go really see outside of America. You know, it's going to expand your whole thing. And when I got out of here, I was just like, oh, oh shit, he right. Okay, yeah, my everything didn't change. My experiences didn't change and stuff. Um, yeah, equipment you see. It's, I mean, every single thing. Everything. Yeah, like, listen, man, like, going out of the country for the first time for me might have, it made me appreciate, <laughs> and it sounds crazy, it made me appreciate Earth different. Yeah, it's like oh, this is somewhere else that I didn't think about, and this shit is happening, and I'm enjoying the shit. I'm and I'm talking, about, I'm really enjoying this. Like oh my god, these people are cool too. Yep. Oh, these people are actually struggling too. They get it. Like these struggling for real. <laughs> and I feel like now more than ever, the musical, the, the culture of music has just crossed all genres. Period. So mm-hmm. it wasn't a time where Afrobeat. It wasn't a time when K-pop. It wasn't a time where you was getting like. Um, it just, it was, now you just get music from everywhere. I feel like, you know, it's just either, if, if it's not the influence of it, it's the actual records of it, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I, I guess probably because people are just, you know, you have you have the access to it now in a different way. Cause you do have, you do have the Spotify's and Apple music mm-hmm. and DS, DSPs and stuff. But um, I got a question in that though. Do you, do you think all that access is the reason why people don't check for it? Yeah, I mean, you got, you got so much access, it's almost like you couldn't find it if you wanted to. Um, and so it just, it's 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 super vast. Like it's, it's more than you can imagine it is, you know, especially when I look on the backside of even our uh, people that are signing up mm-hmm. for, for DAD. And then you can, it's it's, it's a big ocean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ocean just got bigger and no matter how many more you know, things you throw in it, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. So it's making you harder to find things that stick. Um, even if you go to a, a rap caviar radar, it's got the same people on it. Yeah, it's already big. Um, yeah. So that way to really for an artist to really find their way through there, or even for you to find somebody new that you want to listen to, is dope. Mm. It's, it's still kind of hard to do. It's hard, like, and, I, and that's what I'm saying. I, I, I be hoping to God my kids play some shit because <laughs> I know that I I don't even know where to go to find that level. The shit that I'm looking for. Yeah. I'm 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 like it takes so much to get to it. Yeah. Like I really have to search. I really have to talk to a bunch of people to get to different shit. And it happens, luckily, like the way that Afrobeats connected to me, I'm this is like three, four years ago. I'm like matter of fact, maybe maybe five, I think it was two no, it was two thousand fourteen, fifteen. Um, it was do Anaconda Gold. Mm-hmm. Um and a friend of mine hit me and was like, Yo, you should go see this dude at South by Southwest. And I saw it and I was like, oh, they singing real songs. Mm-hmm. And I, it made me start listening different. And mm-hmm. he, like he turned me on to the idea of, man, I'm tripping. I'm not like, there is up tempo music that feels good. There is, there are songs that make sense. Mm-hmm. Like it's not all just club music. So by the way, that's, if there's an issue, I feel like black music has made 
it's been narrowed and marginalized into one thing based on record company thought oh. process. Like, yeah. like what you just said is the whole point. It's like listening to Afrobeats isn't like listening to one beat now. It's like you there's so many spaces in it. There's so many different um, like cultural um, geographical things that make mm-hmm. it different. But it's all it's all music. It's not it's not black music. It's just music. It's all music. So I feel like what what I miss is we don't get the promotion of the the other black music, the other black people doing music. Yeah. Like if it's not if you don't have a feature on it by somebody from Atlanta who can rap, you might be <laughs> fucked up. Like <laughs> it's crazy that it still got a beat that way, yo. That's crazy. Yeah, and it's like, but at the same time, I was like, and then I'm like, but I, don't, I ain't mad at that because at least Atlanta getting a check, right? Like it's 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 kind of like it, it it's such a such a weird thing right Mm -hmm. but it's like i want my 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 prayer (laughs) my prayer is that even in the atlanta space that we get comfortable being different in atlanta yeah being a little more different yeah and letting everybody have their space because it's like everybody riding the same algorithm this shit getting full bro it's getting full bro it's it's (laughs) boring it's like for real like it's really i want to i want to encourage everybody anybody out there please yeah, be Please, special. Go be special. Go do <laughs> something that just makes it when you hear it and you just like, man. Yeah, you gotta be dope too. Don't I ain't saying be different and being weird for the sake of being different. I'm saying like not 14 and a half bars, not like <laughs> <laughs> we talk about that. Like, really though, like yeah, take like, t- try it. Like just try it. You can still take a, a trap beat and I don't know, go find some nineteen twenties Ethiopian disco yeah. and mix it with. I don't know, do something else though that at least make you stand out because for real, you know, I know it's hard not to want to be like everybody that's successful already. Yeah, that, we all that, did that at some yes. capacity. Like I, I started my whole story off with, <laughs> we were trying to be, <laughs> not about like nature, run yeah. DMC. Like was, that was the goal. I was trying to be like Hank Shockley and, and Pete Rock and Teddy Riley and everybody else and yeah. Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, baby. I wanted to be everybody. Yeah, because they um, were doing it. But when I, when I finally got, you know, what, when I finally struck a chord is when, you know, I found my my lane of putting all that together mm-hmm. and like saying, okay, now I figure something out. I take the I take these twenty two samples, but then I'm gonna write a song on top of that that's gonna sound like this and put it with that and do all this and that. And then it became like, oh, okay, that's something new. That's something unique to what what he has. But I mean, I feel like at one point music was super inspirational. Like even even doing the whole like two thousands or like when mm-hmm. there's Neptunes or Timberland or like mm-hmm. you know when when you you're starting to see different elements just come through records all the time. Mm-hmm. And then it just went shoot. And you're like, damn, what happened? Like it's like it ninety percent of your record is eight oh eight and clap and that's <laughs> it. But then like where's the where's the all the stuff that makes it where's super, the feeling? special? And he felt like every now and then, like I said, some some come through every now and then. I'm not saying that nobody has that at all. No, absolutely that'd um, be impossible. <laughs> yeah, so no, it's not like that at all. I just wish we had more of that and less less let's just let's just volume. Let's just stuff just sitting, you know well, what I'm saying? I think it's gonna come back down to the fact that people are gonna get back into the idea of tastemaker. Yeah. Like people who taste they agree with. And like as opposed to major labels, it's gonna go to major taste. Like who mm-hmm. has the taste that is elevated enough but connectable enough to understand how to get, you know, not exclude anybody but just the the best of the best of that mm-hmm. like atlanta is built on outcast Lil john ti gz uh future qc yeah. like it's, it's like some of the hardest working people yeah. everybody we just talked about uh, uh, you uh us like organized no it's like it it is based on people who were trying to be impressive yeah for sure and if we can get more of that like the thing is it's always gonna be money for the other stuff yeah and that's fine but it's like but i i just i do wish there was a place where i could get a little separation because i don't always want to feel like i don't you know i don't always want to feel like that yeah <laughs> i love what love renaissance has been doing with, yeah um, with, with how they kind of formed their union and their label and their um and made it more like a community i see the different things they mm-hmm. do in the communities and stuff like that 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 makes that um unique in the, in the realm of all the other stuff that's going around here. So I do feel like- you know, I mean, now we still, like, Atlanta, I mean, again, culture we have no shortage of. For sure, <laughs> for sure. 
Like mm-hmm. we know what we know what culture we know how to tap into black hearts, and if you yeah. can tap into those hearts, you can tap into any of them because it's like we start from here up. Yep, that's it. It always starts out of the schools here anyway. It always starts yeah. like it's in the roots of the place we in. You know. Yeah. So that being said, man, I mean, thank you for coming by, bro. Oh, you man, know, I we always it. say, you know. It was like a regular kicking session. Yeah, it's like so. That's what's up, man. It was like, man, I, I appreciate that. Ain't nothing like you stopped by, boy. Like, it's like that's the real session. Y'all got some yeah. real gems off in here. You know what I'm saying? Bam! You can get it like that, bro. It's legends, bro. KP a legend, man. I like, ain't even know how T had to hold everything from Pharrell to T out of. Dropping knowledge on if you if listen to what he's saying. If you're a new artist, right? Open your ears, cause you know when you got people that's done it before. They can help you out in a lot of ways that you don't even know about yourself. You know what I'm saying? So keep your mind on your music and your money on your mind. Yeah. Make sure you subscribe. Like, comment, like, subscribe. Comment. Check us out every week, post, week by week. That's it. Mind over music, y'all. Make sure you check us out because once a week you get another one. And on top of that, if you want some exclusive gems just from me to you, then it's only exclusively on DAD Share. So go to www.daddistro. Click on the Web3 button. You'll see all the episodes pop up, or you'll see a link that's gonna pop up on your Facebook page or something like that if you're special. You know tap what I'm in, tap, tap in, in, tap in, y'all. See y'all next time. Peace. Peace.